name's Isabel. I'm a product owner at DSW. We're an independent assessment organisation who've been approved by the government and appointed by your employer to carry out endpoint assessments for the Data Analyst Apprenticeship. In this short video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what's assessed, how it's assessed and who carries out the assessment. Hopefully that will help you to feel confident and well prepared for your assessment so you have a great experience and hopefully a positive outcome as well. Your apprenticeship standard was designed by a group of employers and they came up with the knowledge, skills and behaviours that they feel somebody needs to demonstrate in order to be competent in the role of data analyst. Our responsibility as an assessment organisation is to carry out that endpoint assessment and assess you against the knowledge, skills and behaviours to confirm that you are indeed competent. Your entire endpoint assessment will be carried out by a single assessor. That's somebody that's appointed by DSW. There'll be an expert from your industry and also an expert in carrying out workplace vocational assessments. They're there to put you at ease. They aren't there to catch you out in any way. And the questions that they ask will be based on the work that you've already put forward as part of your portfolio and project. The grading criteria have been designed by employers. This includes a broad range of organisations who all employ data analysts within their business. You can be assured that these grading criteria represent the cutting edge of the profession, providing you with the expertise you need to perform at the highest level within your job role and across the industry. There are 30 past descriptors in your apprenticeship programme. It's these past descriptors that you're going to be assessed against in your endpoint assessment, so it's really vital that you get to know them very well. As well as that, you might be aware you can achieve a distinction grade in your apprenticeship, there are an additional six distinction level criteria that need to be met as well as the pass criteria. If you achieve a pass in one assessment and a distinction in the other, your overall grade will be a merit. Because this is a brief overview, we won't go into too much detail about those here, but there is a lot more detail in the DSW toolkit, which is available via your training provider. In there, you'll find detailed guidance around what's expected to meet, meet each of those criteria, how it's assessed and there are mock resources in there to help you prepare. Your entire endpoint assessment will be based solely on these pass and distinction criteria which are listed in the toolkit. Rest assured there is no trick questions, the assessor will do their best to put you at ease. Now we know what's being assessed, let's look at how it will be assessed. We've got two methods that make up your endpoint assessment. The first is a project with presentation and questioning and the second is a professional discussion which is based on your portfolio. Both of these will take place once you've gone through Gateway. We'll start with the project with presentation and questioning. Your employer should help you to agree on what your project should be. There's a list of potential topic areas for this and a template available in the toolkit. The DSW assessor will confirm a date for this to be submitted. You'll have a maximum of eight weeks to complete and submit your report and your presentation materials. The presentation and questioning is 40 minutes in total. We suggest 20 minutes for the presentation and 20 minutes for the questioning. The assessor will stop you if you get to 30 minutes so there's enough time to cover the questions. They'll ask you at least eight questions and these will be to clarify areas of the presentation where necessary and assess any of the criteria that have not yet been met. You can find mock questions in the toolkit to give you an idea of what might be asked and the good thing is all of the questions are based on the content that you have provided and the grading criteria are all in there for you to see beforehand so you know none of those questions should be a surprise. We'll move on now to the professional discussion which is based on your portfolio of evidence. The portfolio will be developed over the on-program phase of your apprenticeship before you reach the gateway stage. What we're asking for is that you pull together the best pieces of work that you've done during your apprenticeship. We recommend you begin collecting evidence as early as possible. And when you reach Gateway, you should select your best pieces of evidence um, to create a showcase portfolio. Your training provider will support you with this. In the toolkit, you've got a mapping document. You'll work with your line manager and with the coach at the training provider. And they'll help you look at the work you've done and identify if it maps to those past descriptors in the referencing table. The referencing table covers all of the descriptors being covered in the professional discussion, so you'll put evidence in against each one. Once you're ready for Gateway, you'll submit that to DSW electronically, and then our assessor will review the portfolio and use it to prepare questions for the professional discussion. Your portfolio must contain a blend of evidence, such as written statements, witness testimonies from your line manager, and examples of real work that you've done. The professional discussion is just between yourself and the assessor. It's the same assessor that's reviewed your portfolio, so by now they have a good idea of the type of work that you've been involved in. 
and the discussion is to explore that in a bit more detail. The assessor is looking for evidence of any of those past descriptors that perhaps weren't quite met in the portfolio. So they'll start with that, satisfy themselves that you're competent, that you've met those outcomes. Uh, they also use the discussion as a bit more of a deep dive. It's a really good opportunity to get your character and your personality across, sell the best version of yourself and talk about your approach to work and your passion for the apprenticeship that you've done. It's up to 60 minutes and it takes place online, typically using Teams. If you have a different platform you use at work that you would prefer, please do let your training provider know. Chances are we can accommodate that. There'll be a minimum of 10 opening discussion points and they'll be based on your portfolio of evidence. So the good thing is there aren't any curveball questions. The assessor isn't going to ask a question that's a surprise because you've seen all of the grading descriptors, you've mapped your evidence against them. You can bring your portfolio and some notes with you to your discussion if you want to. Um, so when you're asked a question as part of the discussion, you can refer to your own notes if that's helpful for you. It's a discussion rather than an interview, so the assessor might use some questions to prompt a discussion and probe a bit deeper, um, but it really is led by you. We've got lots of resources available to help you get ready for your assessments. Your training provider works closely with the SW to understand the requirements when it comes to your endpoint assessment. If there's anything you don't understand, your tutor or coach is the first port of call. They're there to help and support you. And finally, here are a few tips which apprentices have found useful in building a strong portfolio or project. Number one, start early. Build in regular checkpoints to review potential evidence as the programme progresses rather than waiting until the end. Pick out the best pieces of evidence from what you've collected. You don't want something brilliant to be lost in a mass of evidence. So make sure anything that you've submitted is there for a specific reason. Use naturally occurring evidence wherever possible. Evidence which covers real work situations will really help to bring your portfolio to life. Familiarise yourself with the pass and distinction criteria and the amplification. The key is to really break down the pass and distinction criteria and make sure they're being covered fully. Look at the wording, look at the difference between a distinction and a pass. The command verbs used will indicate the level of, level of depth that is required and the amplification document in the toolkit will explain all of this in a lot more detail. Go through your evidence and see any areas which might potentially be weaker. You can use multiple evidence sources to cover one past descriptor if you need to. The most important part is that you cover all of them in full. Practice, practice, practice. Mock discussions and presentations are a really fantastic way for you to become more comfortable discussing your evidence. Um, and it makes sure you can get all of your points across in the available time as well. Stick to the word limit. Anything over the word limit will not be assessed. And use the resources in the toolkit and the templates we provide. If you need anything to be clarified, always contact your training provider. So I just want to finish by wishing you the best of luck in your endpoint assessment and your career as a data analyst. We hope you have a great experience and a positive outcome as well. Thank you.